All right. Okay, Braden and Sarah, this is a video. Felt like it would demonstrate what I'm seeing pretty well uh, in an issue with the braid handler tool. Okay, so s just to start out, some things that I like about the braid handler tool is that I can edit, you know, this is braided and is main stem <coughs> values pretty easily. And the main reason why I like the ability to edit this is braided is we do still have those circumstances where let's say hypothetically that this connects right here and we've got this like canal on the outside of a valley and with the natural stream uh, profile going through the middle or the other side. I talked to Wally and he said yeah we don't want these classified as braided and so I can go in and change them to to uh, not not is braided. Um, oh, just to talk about the symbology here. So I've, what I've done is basically you have this this uh, green on green is classified as n a side channel and it's braided. Purple on purple is that it's a main stem and not braided. Purple on green is that it is a main stem and it is braided okay so the issue that I'm seeing here is that we've got um, so this is this is symbolized by cluster ID right here and as you can see hopefully all this green is one cluster okay and I totally get braided and why it's one cluster and how the tool has done that and I think that it's hard to get around it um, but I wanted to see if you guys had some ideas here in saying all right this particular circumstance right here we've got the main stem going through here we've got a tributary coming right here and you know this is actually a tributary coming up from here too it's coming from a different source than than the main stem and there, there's some issues with this, okay? So we've got, let, let's see here, so we've got a drainage area of like 29. If I changed most of these values, it would be all right for um, drainage area. We do have some unique ones where we have below one uh, in here but it all depend on like what I would classify as the real main stem. I haven't gone in and, and changed all this because I haven't known exactly what to do with it yet. Um, but let's let's say for uh, t or for learning sakes that we're classifying this as the main stem and it goes through and goes right here. Okay, the main stem of this particular section. All right. Given that this is all one cluster ID, these streams over here are going to receive the same drainage area as the main stem over here, and that can be reflected in this uh, oh, in this layer right here. So we've got potential conflict. The reason why these are all red, you know, it could be somewhat of the vegetation uh, that we're seeing. Uh, with values of zero there's no vegetation because it's agricultural and that's okay but it's also a very very high drainage area over here which isn't okay um, and that's that's something that Wally and I have looked at uh, with being an issue is drainage areas of these clusters are driving these these sections and you know you can say all right up here it's only a drainage area of 29 right that's pretty close to 25 given the model we can assign it a value of 25 I, I'm just playing like devil's advocate here but um, we can assign it a 25 value and go from there and it will be pretty close and give us a close approximation of the uh, of an output for brat However, we have these segments down here, which are a pretty significant difference between 25 and 338. I would uh, have some issues here with 
you know, assigning it a value of 25 or assigning it as a side channel for all of these. Okay. And I think that illustrates the the main issue that I'm seeing with it there. So some possible solutions that I have. The first one is um, to do some manual editing here. Uh, so so what I'd like to do is to actually change up uh, or make it possible to change the cluster ID values before the drainage areas are uh, manipulated with. This can be something that goes under the brat table tool and it's an additional field just like the is braided and is main stem fields are created. We just create that cluster ID right there. And so I can break out these clusters into different segments. I could even have one here, okay, just for this one. All right. And a cluster ID for this segment for this one, okay? And assign those different cluster IDs, keeping in mind that anything that I put in that cluster as a side channel will still be assigned, you know, that value of uh, 25 and the main stem will be that high value of the main stem. All right, so I'd obviously include like all of this as one cluster ID and then probably this is a different one probably this is a different one and this as one all right so I I'd really like that and I think it would solve it of being able to change that cluster ID value second option is and I see some issues occurring with this is that you know we somehow make it so that each one of each one polygon is assigned to a different cluster ID value. Okay? That comes with some implications with it. Alright? So let's say that this this polygon right here I want to assign as an individual cluster ID. Well, it's sharing a line segment with this polygon over here. So, how do you solve this? Well, you could do like a conditional sa statement in Python where you say, all right, if it already has a cluster ID value besides zero, then you assign it a new cluster ID. If it has a cluster ID already, then it keeps that value and any other segments that lie within that polygon are a new cluster ID. I see that being troublesome ma mainly because I think you're going to get these segments out here that are like, okay, these are all side channels. It's a different cluster ID. I don't know exactly what to do with it. And we lose some like relation or relatability between the main stem and its side channels. Okay because this, is, this would be totally non-related to the main stem at all anymore. And so I think there would be some issues there um, besides the issue of you can't have two values within the attribute table, but I think I outlined a possible solution to that. Uh, third thing that I wanted to, or second thing that I wanted to talk about, I think that covers it. I really think that it could be solved by adding in that cluster ID field so you can edit it before Braden's tool runs through it. Um, the second thing that I'd like to talk about is this drainage area value of 25. Um, I think it's kind of difficult, but we've got, you know, drainage areas here of let's go with a side channel, what I would classify totally as a side channel. So I got a drainage area of 0 0.0234. Okay, so that's pretty different than the, and, and let's look at the main channel. Okay, so the main channel is like 0 0.4. If we assign it a value of 25, it's larger than the main stem is. 
and that I think has some implications. I think what we could do is anything less than maybe five or one. One is a pretty significant number that I've seen with there, but I think you could do anything less than um, five and get away with it is that it keeps that drainage area value, that it keeps the low value. And then anything in between 1 and 25 or 5 and 25 gets assigned um, that 25 value, uh, a percentage of the main stem uh, value up to 25. And then anything over that is just 25. Um, I think we could come up with some good solutions for what we classify as the main stent or the side channel values that would really help out the model. So anyway, sorry for the long video. I just thought that it would be better if I, you know, talked about this with you guys through a video than, uh, than online and, and it, anyway. I, th I thought it would be pretty helpful for a video. Give me a shout if you guys have any questions, and I'll talk to you all soon.